Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Nerd Crave. So I've got Kaz here with me today. If you'll remember, for those of you that have been watching for a while, I did a show about six months ago, give or take, and it was a $100 mystery box unboxing. I'll link to that at the end of the video here. But uh, today here for Christmas time, my friend Corey, again, uh, from uh, the Nerd Basement, he sent me another mystery box. I do this with him once or twice a year. And uh, he knows me pretty well. I've been doing a lot of business from him for years, buying comic books and collectibles and things like that. He runs a Facebook page uh, called It Came From The Basement. Have you, are you uh, in that group with me? Or? Uh, I don't think I'm in that group. It's but, not really a group. Uh, it's a page, Yeah, but you talk about it quite a bit. How much of your collection of stuff do you think is uh, from his, his store or whatever? <laughs> well, I have a lot of stuff here, but probably... 40% of the wow. stuff I send away for in the mail, like 40% of the stuff I got in the mail probably came from him. That's a lot. Um, you know, I mean, we do probably two to th three or four boxes a year at least. Wow. So anyway, we have another box here. It came in the mail today. Uh, super excited to open this up, so I'll just uh, play a little music here while we uh, crack into this box and try not to cut into anything with my trusty utility knife. Guys, well, this box is absolutely stuffed full, as you can see here. That's what Christmas is about. Yeah. I'm just going to set this over to the side here so that it doesn't... We have a little bit of room on the table. Hmm. Why don't you move uh, Rudolph and Bumble there just off to the side so we have a little more room on the table. So what do we got here? It's like some sort of... Uh letter or something? No, it's just packaging material. Okay. Oh. <laughs> he just used it to buffer the package. Alright, so what do we got here? Merry Christmas, Nerd Crave. From your pal in the basement. So thank you, Corey. Let's see what's in here. Corey is uh, really great at figuring out stuff that's just going to turn my crank. This is why I've done this the last couple times with him, because half the time I don't even know what to ask for. So what have we got here? Oh my goodness. Ooh. So this is an old... Wow, what's the date on this? This is uh, The Return of Tarzan. Um, this is pretty old. I want to see if I can find the date in here. The publishing date. So is that a that's a book then, right? Not a yeah. This is novel like or anything. These Tarzan was originally like a late eighteen hundreds novel series, I okay. believe. I've got a couple of these old ones. Um, okay, nineteen thirteen was the original copyright. Wow, that's um, that's old. Looks like this one was nineteen sixty seven, and that looks about right. So this is from nineteen sixty seven. That's really cool. I'm a big Tarzan collector, mm. as you know. I've got a ton of Tarzan comics and stuff well, like that. I don't remember if I if I was the one who started it, but I think I got you one of your first Tarzan comics for Christmas one year, or at least the first one that I remember. It could be, yeah. It's been a long time yes. I've been collecting Tarzan. Of course, we got peanuts, peanuts everywhere. Peanuts, peanuts everywhere. All right, let's see. What else have we got here? Oh, oh, oh. This is interesting. Ooh. Uh, Star Trek The Next Generation Collector's Edition. Okay, I've got quite a few of these. Uh, these are the Columbia House. See if I can... These were... Um, there's another set of these as well, I think, that were released by whatever it was, Fox or whatever. Um, that look almost the same, but this is the Columbia House version, and I actually have quite a few of these already, as you can see right down here. These are these were released for Star Trek The Next Generation and the original Star Trek, so this one is uh, Episodes Times Squared and The Icarus Factor. Um, don't think I have this one, but I'm actually going to have to check, but... Uh, uh, for those of you so who that, don't know VHS what you're looking then, right? at, yeah, this is a VHS tape, which goes, I've got about, I haven't counted, but I think I've got about probably six or seven hundred VHS tapes. I'm really into that, and he knows that. Yeah. So, uh, thank That's you, really Corey. Awesome. That was, uh, that was a great, uh, great thing to send along. 
Alright. Ooh, now that looks interesting. Okay, we've got some more, looks like, McDonald's toys here. We've got a couple, there... of, couple of these from last time as well, and he knows I really get off on these, but, uh... So here we've got Daffy Duck. Yeah, these McDonald's toys are uh, surprisingly collectible. They really can be. I think I have this one already, but you can never have enough Mickey. So uh, this one is actually, like, commemorative to the, the VHS release of The Spirit of Mickey, uh, which I do have in on VHS over there as well. And then, uh, what's this last one here? Oh, we got the Tasmanian Devil, and it's basketball, so I'm assuming this is circa about 1994 for, Space, for Space Jam. Jam yeah. That, 1996. That. 1996. So this, uh, this and this are Space Jam McDonald's toys. So that's really cool. Uh, mm. Good call on that. Or just set those over by the Christmas tree so they're out of the way. Yeah, of course. Get some of this packing peanuts out of the way that I just had to throw everywhere. Alright, you are your own demise. What else have we got? Oh, we got a video game. And this is a factory sealed, Ooh. or it could be resealed. I'm not a hundred no, I th no, it's got the it's got the Y joint or whatever there. I would say this is a factory sealed copy of the Sims 2. Uh for stupid light. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Sims 2 for the PSP. Now, I actually just started collecting for the PSP a little while ago. Mm. Um, I mentioned that I kind of put that one together from spare parts. So I've only got um, four or five games for the PSP so far. Which is pretty so, interesting. You used to have like a whole binder full of loose PSP games. Uh, yeah, well, I got... You were getting into it before, and yeah. then you... Ended up selling it. Well, yeah, I ended up selling my PSP and my Vita and all the games for both in exchange for a Super Nintendo, which you know how, right? Yeah, I got the Super Nintendo um, that came with uh, I got a couple of really good games. I got Super Nintendo, Nintendo and Earthbound, and uh, and then I ended up trading those, too. So now yeah. Kaz I, has the Super Nintendo, and Earthbound went to somebody else, another mm -hmm. collector. So, again, I don't know, Corey, if you happen to watch a couple of my recent videos and realize that I'd just gotten into PSP stuff, but uh, great, uh, great selection anyway, for sure. All right, guys, so what have we got next? Here we got something wrapped up ooh, real tight here, so let's see what's in here. All right, I think Corey must have uh, seen some of my PSP videos because this is a uh, factory-sealed carrying case for the PSP, and see, it's actually the official one. Oh, that's um, actually really like, nice. It's got yeah, the Sony, the Sony PlayStation, yeah. PlayStation hologram on it, and so that's really cool. I might keep this sealed, to be honest with yeah. you. Yeah. Um, I guess you do. You have a carrying case already. I don't or? have a carrying case, but that's the that's kind of the cool thing about it. Like. Do you open it and use it because it's a super cool case? Or, like, this is it not looks... something you see factory sealed every day. So, true, true. You know, you gotta wonder. I don't know. As I'm a collector, gonna... you might want to keep that sealed and just get some off brand one to use. Daily. I'm gonna think about keeping that sealed, but, you know, Corey, That's... let me know what was your intention there, my friend. Uh, great call, anyway. So, what do we got? Oh, alright. We have got an old mini mouse. Pez dispenser, complete with Pez. Uh, I don't know how old this is, so I am not going to eat the Pez. <laughs> well, uh, we'll take it to PezCon. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Mini Mouse there with some shades on. Um, th these things are absolutely iconic. I mean, mm. there are whole Facebook groups and eBay pages just dedicated to buying and selling Pez uh, dispensers, those are super cool. Do you have any? Uh, not anymore, but as a kid, I had a huge collection of Pez dispensers, I loved them, and, uh, yeah. I think it was Rick and Morty actually made a joke about PezCon, is what I was just kind yeah. of re referencing there, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Pez is really iconic, that's for sure. What else have we got here? Okay, here's another VHS tape, and this is kind of cool. The original cult classic, Night of the Living Dead. And this is a blockbuster classic re-release, which is super cool. Oh, like from Blockbuster Video. Yeah, you don't wow. see a whole lot of blockbuster stuff floating around, around here anyway anymore. But uh, a very iconic horror movie. Uh, and with that blockbuster logo on that, that's just, you know, so nostalgic. So that's really cool. That will uh, definitely... I don't have a whole lot of horror movies. Before I moved to Edmonton uh, last time, I actually got rid of 
a couple hundred VHS tapes just to try and reduce Condense, the storage yeah. a little bit. Um, so I really only kept my hands on, uh, you know, my Disney stuff and my really cool pop culture stuff, the the Back to the Futures and yeah. Terminators and all the Star Trek and Star Wars movies and stuff like that. The stuff that was important to you. All right, so we got another novel here. Okay, Ooh. here's another. This is Tarzan of the Apes. This is the first book in the series, I believe, the original Tarzan of the Apes. I think there's about eight or ten at least of the Tarzan mm. original novels. I was about to make a really stupid question, uh, or ask a really stupid question, if there's yeah. a crossover between Tarzan and Planet of the Apes. <laughs> I don't think so. Though. No, but <laughs> now that you mention that, I'm pretty sure that Dark Horse, Corey, you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, but did Dark Horse not do a Tarzan and Planet of the Apes crossover at some point? That'd be really Let me know in the comments, guys. Um... I seem to really remember uh, uh, Tarzan and Planet of the Apes crossover somewhere. Maybe it was just a miniseries event or something. But that seems like something either Dark Horse or uh, Dynamite or somebody like that would do. They're really into doing that kind of thing. So this is a more recent paperback. Um, this one was probably printed in the early 90s or something, I would say, just looking at the style of the book. But yeah. I don't see... Yeah, copyright 1990. So, yeah, this looks like... This is the kind of artwork that you see on early 90s books. So, definitely uh, glad to have that. I think I would like to get the entire set um, all matching, if possible, at some point. And I actually really like this kind of format. And this... I don't know who the artist is, the cover artist is for this. But that's a really cool-looking cover. Mm. All right, what else have we got here? Oh, we've got an N64 oh, game. In box, too. That's awesome. Mission Impossible. Expect the Impossible. On the N64. Looks like this is complete in box. The box wow. is a little bit rough, but not too bad. Considering so, it's 96 and it's a cardboard box. What too. do we got or here? N64, so we've got. 96. We've got a double-sided poster. Sweet. I would say this is pretty close to complete. Uh, we've got the N64 consumer booklet, which is just like warnings and safety and that sort of thing. Um, and even the advertisement slip. Which is really we've cool. got an ad slip Ooh. here for subscribing to Nintendo Power. Do you think, do you think cool. they'll still let us subscribe? I wish they would. I mean, <laughs> you know, I've got... Uh, I'm coming on about... 75 to 100 Nintendo Powers, and man, I would love to complete that set. I would love to be able to just order back issues for five bucks a piece or something. But yeah, this looks uh, this looks super complete. It's got the cardboard insert. The game itself is in a bag, which I think someone added after the fact because I don't think the bags came with them. I don't well, think. I don't know, but even so, but, you've got uh, all the labeling on the top and the back. That's definitely not original Nintendo. Yeah, this looks so. like it came from a rental uh, store or something like that. So it's it was got, definitely put uh, together, but that's pretty cool though that yeah. they even found a sleeve for it. And yeah, that's really cool. I was actually thinking about getting an N64. It's one of the few systems I don't have. Um, and now that I've got this uh, this beautiful Sony Trinitron over here in the studio, I'm sure some of you have seen it in some of the shots, uh, and I've got my Xbox and Dreamcast and Sega Genesis and PS1 and 2 and uh, all that kind of stuff out here set up, I'm really feeling the nostalgia to pick up an N64, so I'm going to have to, we'll have to try this out over the winter or something. Yeah, for sure. N64s are not all that hard to come by, so. So, moving right along here, what have we got here? We've got some comic books by the looks of it, which of course, this wouldn't be a box for Corey without some comic books. And packing peanuts. So what have we got here? Alright. Ah, oh, nice. So we've got Gladstone, Walt Disney's Christmas Parade. Now, I absolutely love Gladstone Disney comics. These were released in the late 80s and early 90s. Um, and that was right during my prime time when I was 10 to 12 to 13 years old. And I was buying and collecting these all the time. Um, I got rid of most of my collection when I was like 17, 18 years old, and I've regretted it ever since. Uh, so 
Corey knows I'm, I'm constantly trying to go back and and fill in all those holes. I don't have anywhere near a complete run of any of this stuff, but uh, these special edition kind of annuals and things like that are really great to have. They're getting really hard to find. They're not terribly expensive, but... Mm. But it's just because it's kind of obscure and yeah. old. I'm going to set these down here, so what else? Not too got? many people outside of you care about them. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea what this is. Corey, help me out here. Deja Thor Thoris. Thoris. Deja Thoris. Beautiful cover. Um, really nice artwork here. Uh, it is a dynamite comma, uh, comic, but I don't know anything about this. And normally, Corey has uh, wonderful labels that he puts on here, but there seems to be no labels on the next couple. Uh, so, I don't know what that is. But I'll definitely check it out, and the artwork looks fantastic. Uh, now, here's something that Corey knows very much that I am into, and that is the Green Hornet. Um, are you familiar? Not really? Like Not really. I know they made a movie about it. Uh, I don't know. The movie was, was terrible. It? I've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> but it was about, what, like se seven, ten years ago? Something like yeah, that well, the Green Hornet was this really cool kind of Batman-style character from back in, like, the, you know, 30s and 40s era and radio dramas and things okay. like that. Uh, they made a TV show about uh, the Green Hornet in the 60s around the same time as the retro Batman uh, 66 uh, TV show. Okay. And uh, it was pretty much the first appearance of Bruce Lee. Okay, uh, that's as, pretty cool. As Kato, the Green Hornet sidekick. And I think it only ran for one season. I've got it. But uh, I have really collected as many of these as I can. The significance of this is that uh, this is based on Kevin Smith's movie script that never got made. Like, they originally were going to go with Kevin Smith's movie script, and then they made the horrible one with Seth Rogen or whoever the hell mm. it was instead. And uh, so Kevin Smith's scripts and ideas got transferred into uh, comic books through Dynamite, and these are really special. They're, like, really fantastic so glad to add that to my collection now here we have uh, a dynamite kind of a trade paperback graphic novel uh, Battlestar Galactica volume 1 memorial um, I love Battlestar Galactica and if you can see in the artwork uh, this is based on the original 1978 Battle okay. Ga Battlestar Galactica not the reboot from 10 years ago or whatever both of them were good, but I am much more a fan of the original Battlestar Galactica. Uh, I just like the tone of the show a lot better. It was much more optimistic and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So I'll definitely enjoy looking through that. Uh, another Dark Horse comic here, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. So it's a Dark Horse Classics issue. Black and white interior. That's nice to see. That's a nice addition. Uh, something else that I have been collect collecting bit by bit, and these are hard to find, get this lined up and away from the light here. Orphan Black is a Canadian sci-fi sort mm. of TV show. I don't know if you've I've, ever seen it. I haven't seen it, but I've heard about it. It's what's, what's it about? Super cool. Um, the idea is that this company created a whole bunch of clones of the same person for some kind of insidious scientific research, and they, like put all these clones out into the world in different lives and different lifestyles and stuff to see how they would react to, you know, being poor, being rich, being educated, be, you know, becoming okay. a criminal, a drug addict. Like, But the cool thing about it is the same girl, Tatiana Mazale, plays all the clones, mm -hmm. and she plays, like, dozens of different characters speaking different languages and, like, really completely... Cool. Like, her acting talent is just off the charts. I mean, she plays everything from a drug addict to a soccer mom to, a like, a geeky, nerdy girl to, you know, a Russian assassin-type chick. Like, uh, all That's cool. awesome. Super cool show. I'll definitely have to actually watch that at some point. It sounds it's, right up my alley. It's really neat, yeah. All right, so we're starting to get towards the end of the box. What do we got here? Oh, we've got a little Sonic. Sonic little Sonic the Hedgehog uh, It looks like figure. classic Sonic, too. 
which is pretty nice. It's always hard to line this up because yeah. you see me having trouble. I'm sitting on the opposite side of the computer that I normally do because I've got Kaz sitting over there. And it's so like not it's, it's mirrored, right? So it's like, you know, you move your hand this way and it comes over this way. <laughs> so I'm doing my best here, guys. But uh, yeah, that's really cool. I don't know. Looks like he's not going to stand on his own. Oh, I guess he kind of leans over on his arm there. So, all right. What else have we got? Now, oh, where did this come from? Okay, we've got, uh, I've got a few of these figurines already. I've got uh, the Huey, Dewey, and Louie in the band, you know, with the drums and stuff like that. I've got a couple of these, but I don't have either one of these. Now, I don't are know. those repackaged, or are those, like, actually the official original plastic packaging or whatever? No, this is repackaged. Um, it says 1980, applause, Mickey, top hat, applause, mini... Um, Bully Louie Duck with Drum. Hmm. Um, it says super cool. Uh, I don't know if you can see right over here, I have a whole shelf of Disney figurines. So this is going to find a spot. This will get opened and these will find a spot on there. I'm actually going to have to commission a new shelf because I'm running out of room for Disney figures. Coming towards the end here, what do we got? Another Edgar Rice Burroughs uh, novel, The People That Time Forgot. Now, this looks like a short story. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's a small, slim novel. Uh, Frank Frazetta Cover, who's a famous comic artist, did the cover of this book. And, uh, you know, it looks really cool. I mean, it kind of gives you the vibes of uh, kind of Land of the Lost or something with, like, dinosaurs in the background and that sort of thing. I don't know if you can see that. But I'll definitely have to check that out. I am a big Edgar Rice Burroughs fan. He's it's actually some really nice art. And it's almost, uh, it's the same artist, is it, from the other Tarzan book? Or? I'm not sure who did the cover of the other one, but, uh, you know, it's got those same vibes. Yeah, the same prehistoric vibes and stuff would be really cool. Alright, what else Ooh, we got here? Now that's big. Now this... I think I did talk to Corey about this at one point, and I'd forgotten about it. But this is a soft cover Art of Warner Brothers animation book. Um, I don't know if you can see it here, but there's a lot of looks like uh, background information on the artists themselves and the the art process. There's a lot of really gorgeous looks like film cells and sketches and. Yeah, I, I really get off on this kind of stuff. Um, I'm a huge Disney fan, but right under Disney is the Warner Brothers stuff, particularly the early, um, you know, Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies type stuff. I really enjoy that stuff from my childhood. I actually got another Warner Brothers book from Corey, I believe, in the last box or the box before that. Uh, so this is kind of a companion to that, and uh, I'm always on the lookout for art books, and I just really love this kind of thing. Just looks great on a shelf, and you can pick it up, and you know, at mm. any point, and just kind of flip through the history. You know, it's just a uh, just kind of, yeah, like learn, look at what they went through, the art they went through. Yeah, it's just there's so much nostalgia here, but it's also super interesting. Like this seems to go through. Almost encyclopedia-wise, it goes through individual characters. Like, here's kind of a spread on Foghorn Leghorn. And it talks about, uh, you know, the the drawing of him and, uh, you know, his different appearances, concept art, and that sort of thing. So, thank you very much, Corey. I, uh, I'm really going to get a lot of love in this. I think we're... I keep saying this. Okay, yeah, down to the last item here. So, one... Ooh, that looks nice condition. All right. Mm -hmm. The Citizen Kane book, including the world-famous essay Raising Kane by Pauline Kael and the shooting script uh, by Herman Mankiewicz and Orson Welles of Citizen Kane, which is an absolutely uh, iconic movie mm -hmm. uh, before your time, obviously. But uh, Have this you is... read the book of it? Or? Well, this is basically... For all intents and purposes, the script. Oh, okay. Um, That's you know, you can see like uh, Emily Kane, Emily yeah. Kane. Um, you know, so this is there's there's a short story in here, and then basically the script. Interesting. Which is 
super cool. Mm. All right, guys. Well, we're at the end of this wonderful mystery box for another few months or a year. Thanks for sticking around with us, Kaz. Thanks for coming in and yeah. keeping me company Thanks here. Thanks for having me. It's, uh, it's always fun to open a mystery box once in a while. And, uh, you know, you always have the... Uh, it's just more fun to share it with yeah. somebody than to just kind of sit here and talk to yourself, right? So, yeah, exactly. You know, you got some really cool stuff here too. It's a lot of fun to get stuff. It's Christmas time, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's it's really cool when you develop a relationship with other people out there in the community. Corey's not the only one that I do this sort of thing with, but uh, you know, I've probably developed the closest relationship with Corey in terms of him understanding the types of things that I'm going to be passionate mm. about. So, you know, another Merry Christmas, Corey. Yeah. Thank you so much for the box. And, uh, <clears throat> um, were you going to say something? I, I was, I was just going to ask something. So who are like the three, three people off the top of your head that you sent something out to this year for Christmas? They can go check out their channels. Well, I've sent out, um, I sent out a Christmas gift to Smash JT. He's kind of one of my uh, role models. I sent something to Papa Pete, who's a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. um, I'll leave links to their channels in the description. Uh, Smash JT, Papa Pete. Uh, somebody that I follow uh, quite a lot, uh, Isha Gaming. Uh, I did put a few things together to send to her, but I imagine she's not going to receive it till after the holidays because it's being shipped yeah. to Norway. Um, but yeah, absolutely go and check those people out. Uh, Isha Gaming is right up my alley in terms of, uh, my tastes in video games. She does a lot of videos about, uh, Switch games that I'm also really into, like farming games and life sim games yeah, and it's really cool. things like so, that. So, well, Merry Christmas, guys. <laughs> absolutely. And stay classy. <laughs>